Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com And on this episode, I'm going to go on a little rant And so, um, I don't like to uh, upgrade my hardware Unless it's absolutely necessary uh, I really believe that, you know, software is way more important than hardware Because if you have really good software, um, it's going to last you a lot longer You know, case in point with Linux You know, I had Linux running on uh, my previous laptop Previous two, actually, the oldest one I had uh, was a Dell 810 and uh, I'm gonna leave a picture up there somewhere up here and uh, that laptop like I, get, I think it came out in like 2005 and so it's pretty pretty old especially in uh, technology years but I was still able to run Linux day to day on it you know just daily use so um, until you know the hardware it gave up and it died and so after that I actually got a uh, Toshiba satellite and I think that one was about six seven years old um, I might leave a picture up there as well, and it was really, really beat up, um, but it still worked. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, with uh, the technologies, you know, I mean, uh, it's constantly moving, and so uh, at some point, your hardware can't keep up with it, and the ca that's the case with my Toshiba satellite, because uh, I couldn't even, like, watch YouTube videos in high def, because the processor couldn't handle it, and also, I couldn't do stuff like video editing, um, and, you know, like, hard hardcore, uh, you know, multimedia, you know, unless uh, I had more powerful hardware, and especially gaming. And so, I thought to myself, you know, this is, this is probably the best time, you know, the computers or laptops are relatively cheap, and uh, it wouldn't be hard for me to just get one, slap on Linux on it, and it's going to run like a dream. And so, my first thought was to get a Windows 10 machine, um, and I have some thoughts about that. But I thought, well, let, let me just go ahead and get like a one that's not new, and you know, just put Linux on and the hardware is still going to be better than anything I have at this point. And so I got a, a HP laptop and um, it actually had Windows 8.1 on it, but it was upgradable to 10. And um, I got it for a really good price and the hardware, it's got an AMD A8 processor. Uh, I think it's a quad core processor. Uh, it does have an a integrated Radeon R5 graphics card GPU. So pretty good, much better than anything I've had. And so uh, here's where my rant comes in. First and foremost, you know, um, this isn't just Windows 8.1, but this is especially Windows 10. Uh, when I was playing around with it is um, I just couldn't uh, slap on a different uh, Linux distribution and uh, overwrite the operating system. It has this thing called UEFI, which is a um, unified, I think, I can't remember, but it's secure boot. Let's just say that. And secure boot, the premise behind it is uh, it'll keep the uh, bootloader uh, from getting loaded with malware and so forth, which makes sense. You know that that is that is important That's something that wasn't on the original uh, BIOS the system BIOS before and older machines however uh, Microsoft has their own version which is called uh, UEFI and uh, Basically if your hardware doesn't detect a certified Microsoft OS on there. It, it won't boot <laughs> which sucks and so um, with Windows 8.1 and the same with Windows 10 just to get to the new BIOS it took me like a while, like over an hour to figure out how to get in there because it's not like before you where you would restart your computer and normally you would press escape, uh, F10, uh, F2, you know, whatever key combination for that manufacturer. That doesn't work anymore. And so in this case, you'd have to go into, you'd have to boot into Windows, you'd have to go into your settings, you have to go into system and recovery, and then you'd have to go to advanced setup, and then from there you would have to boot into the BIOS, and then from there you would have to change the boot settings and um, turn off uh, UEFI uh, if that's something that you wanted. Um, and with Windows 10, a lot of the newer versions, uh, they don't, some of the manufacturers, they haven't done it yet, but before they would give the option always available, you could turn off UEFI, but now um, you, the manufacturers don't have to. And so you could easily see that in the future where computers, unless it has Windows on it, you can't put anything else on there so you don't own your hardware that that just really pissed me off I mean it took me a long time to figure it out and honestly I mean and I'm, I'm a tech I'm a techie so um, to think that it would take that much work and you know I haven't used Windows for a long time so but I didn't think it would be that hard now my initial idea was to go ahead and run Windows and then have a separate partition for Linux so I would have a dual boot system and um, when I was looking at the partition it had four different partitions and the main partition, I tried to use the Windows uh, shrink, the shrink feature to, to reduce the amount of space. It had like a 
like 500 something gigs but 430 gigs was available so i wanted to like allocate 300 gigs for linux and leave the rest for windows including the recovery and so forth but i couldn't even do that it it had some certain uh system files in there and you would have to really move like really mess with it to move those files around turn off uh things such as hibernation fast boot but that's not not even the the hard parts you know it's like moving files around and then that doesn't guarantee that um at some point or another that whether or not windows will boot up or that it, your bootloader for your linux would even boot up so after many hours of trying that i just gave up and i'm you know i, I did figure out how to turn off uh, the secure boot which is great because then I was able to get my favorite Linux distro, Linux Mint. You know, I have the link below about my favorite Linux distro. Um, 17.2 Raphael. Uh, I know 17.3 Rosa just came out. But um, I was able to get Linux Mint finally on there. And I just said, screw it. You know, I don't, I don't want to deal with this anymore. But just as, as what I was about to do that, Windows had an update. And anybody who uses Windows, they're familiar with, you know, they have new updates. And, you know, when you, you try to restart your computer and it has to put all these updates. But with, like, Windows 8... And Windows 10, these updates are insane. I had two updates in a period of uh, 24 hours, and each update took over one hour. Um, and that's going to lead me to my privacy stuff. And so, uh, bottom line, I'm just now getting my Linux, my uh, Linux Mint box set up, my laptop, because of all the pain that I had to go through uh, with Windows. And, you know, I, initially I kind of thought, man, this is, you know, this isn't that bad, you know. But then the pop-up started coming up. Uh, the security updates started coming up. Everything was just so much harder. And I had some freezes. It was a brand new, fresh install of Windows. I refreshed everything. And so I was really pissed off. And then the whole putting on another OS with Secure Boot, that just did it for me. I, I don't think I ever want to go back to Windows. Which leads me to Windows 10 privacy. Now, if you didn't know a few months ago, um, you know, Windows openly said that they have uh they're going to be looking at your data pretty much they have like basically built-in key loggers on their system so uh they're saying this is going to enhance your experience but they're also going to use this to say that they could give this data to government entities if they need it so the bad part about this is and really bad is they the key loggers if you don't know they they keep track of everything that you type in your keyboard and so and also um it takes uh, into account your browsing history um if you wouldn't use your voice recognition for Cortana, it would record all of that. It records everything. It's a huge, basically it's one big spyware built into Windows 10 automatically. And then it's been rumors that they've already pushed out updates for older version of Windows to have some of these new um, features built in. And so um, I, that pretty much did it. I definitely do not want to go back to Windows. Um, that was such a frustrating experience. And that's from somebody who, uh, you know, who loves technology and who knows a little bit about tech stuff to actually, you know, fix things. I can't imagine like the 90% of the rest of the world who uses Windows, who basically, even if they knew that they were being spied on, they wouldn't have the know-how to do it. And even if you did have the know-how, Windows is constantly pushing in new updates. And so uh, that's my rant. Um, <laughs> I hate Windows. I'm sorry. I mean, Microsoft is a company, no problems. You know, I'm, I, I do really uh, respect Bill Gates and what he's done uh, for the technology industry, especially with his uh, philanthropy. But when it comes to Windows, um, I really hate it. <laughs> I just, yeah, um, that's it for my rant. And uh, if you do like these episodes, be sure to uh, click to subscribe. Um, and also, if you had any comments or ideas, leave them below. And for full rent episodes, head out to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.